Welcome spring. It's Joanne from Adult Services providing a smattering of early spring mystery and suspense releases to pique your curiosity. All annotations are provided by the respective authors publishers. Let's begin. In the Company of Killers. Tom Clay is a celebrated investigative wildlife reporter for the esteemed magazine, The Sovereign. But Clay is not just a journalist. His reporting is cover for an even more dangerous job, CIA agent. Clay's press credentials make him a perfect spy, able to travel the globe, engage both politicians and warlords, and openly record what he sees. When he needs help, the agency provides it to him and asks little in return. But while on assignment in Kenya, Clay is attacked and his closest friend is murdered. Soon, Clay's carefully constructed double life unravels as his ambition turns to revenge. Maryland. Cat lives in Los Angeles, far away from 36 Westerick Road, the imposing Gothic house in Edinburgh, where she and her estranged twin sister, Elle, grew up. As girls, they invented Maryland, a dark imaginary place under the pantry stairs full of pirates, witches, and clowns. These days, Kat rarely thinks about their childhood home or the fact that Elle now lives there with her husband, Ross. But when Elle mysteriously disappears after going out on her sailboat, Kat is forced to return to 36 Westerick Road, which has scarcely changed in 20 years. The grand old house is still full of shadowy corners, and at every turn, Kat finds herself stumbling on long-held secrets and terrifying ghosts from the past. Because someone has left Kat clues in almost every room, a treasure hunt that leads right back to Maryland, where she knows the truth lies crouching and waiting. Basil's War. Basil St. Florian is an accomplished agent in the British Army, tasked with dozens of dangerous missions for crown and country across the globe. But his current mission, going undercover in Nazi-occupied France during World War II, might be his toughest assignment yet. He will be searching for an ecclesiastic manuscript that doesn't officially exist, one that genius professor Alan Turing believes may hold the key to a code that could prevent the death of millions and possibly even end the war. St. Florian isn't the classic British special agent with a stiff upper lip. He is a swashbuckling, whiskey-drinking cynic and thrill-seeker who resents having to leave Vivian Lee's bed to set out on his crucial mission. Despite these proclivities, though, Basil's army superiors know he's the best man for the job, carrying out his espionage with enough charm and quick wit to make any of his subjects lower their guards. The Girl Who Died Una wants nothing more than to teach but she has been unable to secure steady employment in Reykjavik. Her savings are depleted, her love life is non-existent, and she cannot face another winter staring at the four walls of her shabby apartment. Celebrating Christmas and ringing in 1986 in the remote fishing hamlet of Scalar seems like a small price to pay for a chance to earn some teaching credentials and get her life back on track. But Scalar isn't just one of Iceland's most isolated villages. It is home to just 10 people. Una's only students are two girls aged seven and nine. Teaching them only occupies so many hours in a day, and the few adults she interacts with are civil but distant. She only seems to connect with Thor, a man she shares an attraction with, but who is determined to keep her at arm's length. As darkness descends throughout the bleak winter, Una finds herself more often than not in her rented attic space, the site of a local legendary haunting, drinking her loneliness away. She is plagued by nightmares of a little girl in a white dress singing a lullaby. And when a sudden tragedy echoes an event long buried in Scala's past, the villagers become even more guarded, leaving a suspicious Una, seeking to uncover a shocking truth that's been kept secret for generations. A peculiar combination. 
Elector McDonald has always known that the way she and her family earn their living is slightly outside of the law. Breaking into the homes of the rich and picking the locks on their safes may not be condoned by British law enforcement, but World War II is in full swing. Ellie's cousins, Colm and Toby, are all fighting against Hitler, and Uncle Mick's more honorable business as a locksmith can't pay the bills anymore. The executive order. In a post-Trump and Biden world, an independent Senator, Ian Reitman, is elected president to heal a nation frayed by extreme partisanship. After years of reporting chaos in the White House, digital journalist Rolly Stone and his colleagues embrace the normalcy. But after the country is rocked by a series of devastating terrorist attacks, the new administration springs into action and begins rolling out executive orders that claim to protect the American people while slowly chipping away at their constitutional freedoms. Rolly Stone is a wounded warrior whose high-tech mighty chair serves as his unique assistant in investigations. When he uncovers evidence that the terrorist attacks are being coordinated much closer to home, he knows he needs to get this information into safe hands. But the president has declared war, and through his new executive powers is rounding up journalists, dissenters, and anyone else who gets in his way. Forced on the run with the help of an underground resistance movement, Rowley finds himself in a race for his life to reveal the truth. But who can he trust? The Hunting Wives. Sophie O'Neill left behind an envy-inspiring career in the stressful competitive life of big city Chicago to settle down with her husband and young son in a small Texas town. It seems like the perfect life with a beautiful home in an idyllic rural community. But Sophie soon realizes that life is now too quiet and she's feeling bored and restless. Then she meets Margot Banks, an alluring socialite who is part of an elite clique secretly known as the Hunting Wives. Sophie finds herself completely drawn to Margot and swept into her mysterious world of late night target practice and dangerous partying. As Sophie's curiosity gives way to full-blown obsession, she slips farther away from the safety of her family and deeper into this nest of vipers. Local woman missing. Shelby Tebow is the first to go missing. Not long after, Meredith Dickey and her six-year-old daughter Delilah vanished just blocks away from where Shelby was last seen striking fear into their once peaceful community. Are these incidents connected? After an elusive search that yields more questions than answers, the case eventually goes cold. Now, 11 years later, Delilah shockingly returns. Everyone wants to know what happened to her, but no one is prepared for what they'll find. And finally, the photographer. As a photographer, Delta Dawn observes the seemingly perfect lives of New York City's elite, snapping photos of their children's birthday parties, transforming images of stiff hugs and tear-stained faces into visions of pure joy and creating moments these parents long for. But when Delta is hired for Natalie Straub's 11th birthday, she finds herself wishing she wasn't behind the lens, but a part of the scene. In the Straub family's gorgeous home, an elegant life. That's when Delta puts her plan in place by babysitting for Natalie, befriending her mother Amelia, finding chances to listen to her father Fritz. Soon, she's bathing in the master bathtub, drinking their expensive wine, and eyeing the beautifully finished garden apartment in their tan house. It seems she can never get close enough until she discovers that photos aren't all she can manipulate. And remember, spring is also for gardening. You don't have to wear a mask to play in the dirt. Visit our seed library for our ever-evolving selection to cultivate, grow, and enjoy.